Social deduction games have long been a favourite of mine. Ever since I played the ship at a LAN back in 2006, I was hooked on the idea of playing with people in a more social context, rather than shooting baddies or ticking down a flag in Day of Defeat. And since then I've always been interested in what the genre can become. Spy Party delivers an asymmetrical deception unlike any other game I've experienced. Project Winter, it's a role-based deceptive masterpiece that only continues to improve with every single update. Among Us, it became the biggest game in the world, thanks to its accessibility and its free-to-play price point. Today I'm jumping on board First Class Trouble with six of my closest frenemies and the real question, is it worth it? First Class Trouble is a social deduction game that puts six players aboard the ISS Aletheia, an intergalactic luxury cruise ship in a pseudo 50 sci-fi world. A disaster has struck and the passengers must band together to shut down Kane, the central artificial intelligence network. However, among the passengers are two personoids, androids who want to keep Kane in control and will do whatever is necessary to make that happen. And this puts the passengers in an interesting position of deducing who the personoids are and who can be trusted, and it creates an interesting dynamic that only grows in complexity as your knowledge of the game expands. A round of first class trouble takes place over three decks of the cruise ship. The opening floor is always the passenger deck, with each player beginning the round in their own room as they search the surrounding areas for the three key cards needed to progress to the next deck. Once all three key cards are inserted into the elevator, the group moves on to the middle deck which is always a randomised location. If the group manages to survive and collect another three key cards, they can progress to the final deck, the server room. If the group does make it to the server room, all passengers need to do is make it across to Kane's terminal and all interact together to shut the system down. If all of the participants are passengers, then they shut down the system and win the game. Yet, if a single one of them happens to be a personoid, the system remains on and the passengers lose. And when you're first learning the game, it may seem that all the personoids need to do in order to win is play by the rules, make it to Kane's console, but it's not that easy however because along the way the passengers can find out some very valuable information. Enter the passenger logs, a randomised log that will help the group deduce who among them is potentially a personoid. For example, picking up this log it gives me four names and it revealed that at least one of them was a personoid. I told that to the group and we marked them accordingly in our menus to remember the information. It seems that some floors potentially have more than one passenger log too and this can quickly cause issues for the personoids. But how does the group know that I was telling the truth? Maybe I wasn't. In between decks, the game has a quick chance to vote someone out and potentially reveal the passenger log to the entire group. If I had lied and they had remembered what I said, then they for sure would think I was sus. However, if I had lied and the passenger log was not revealed, then I could have potentially thrown them off the trail. And this makes passenger logs incredibly valuable, but the desire to obtain them can also lead to some revealing behaviour. Why did Valen just start sprinting into every single room searching for the logs so quickly? Is he trying to help the group or perhaps sabotage the logs if he was a personoid? Old mate Blue, he sure did find all those keycards quick, progressed us to the next deck before we could get a chance to find the logs and do some detective work. Maybe he's worried that his name's on that list. Many of the rooms containing items and passenger logs will be locked behind some fairly basic skill checks. Some will require two people to press a button at the same time, and others require explaining symbols to each other to be put on a screen, and others are just speedy click checks that are quite easy to fail actually, and this can immediately create distrust among the group because while it is easy to fail, it's also very convenient to fail if you happen to be a personoid. And this creates an immediate sense of tension, especially if a player is required to go into the airlock. One player will be responsible for holding the airlock open, continuously succeeding at the click check, while the other rummages inside for powerful items or a needed keycard. And it's very easy to mess this up, slamming the airlock door shut and ejecting your fellow passenger into the far reaches of space. A level of trust is needed, but it can also be very easily broken. While searching and deducing is terribly fun, the group also needs to deal with a series of environmental hazards along the way. There is an oxygen level that is constantly draining, fires that block access to essential areas of the deck, electrical hazards that could instantly kill someone. There is always something pulling at your attention which makes it incredibly hard to keep track of who is getting keycards, following your suspects and general survival. You do get a few perks if you're a personoid. Passengers have proximity based voice chat while personoids can secretly talk via a secure channel at all times. They can also access secret exits, brute force their way into locked rooms to potentially sabotage information and retrieve the almighty syringe. 
Securely locked in personoid only pods, these syringes are on display for everyone to see and obtaining them can be quite a challenge, but one simple dose of what's inside will kill a passenger instantly. That's quite the contrast to a regular kill move which requires one passenger to grab the target and another in the party to initiate the killing blow. So in those early games when everyone's learning, it feels like first class trouble is heavily weighted towards the personoids. Their ability to sabotage the oxygen supply, or use environmental traps to cover their murder sprees, or that one time Macrobat dropped the chandelier and wiped out two people? It was fun, but it was really tough. For our first hour of games, the passengers never even came close to winning. But as we started to see the meta and how important the passenger logs were to corroborate shady actions, it started to feel like First Class Trouble actually had a lot more balance than what was immediately apparent. First Class Trouble does suffer from the same issue that all social deduction games experience. It requires the players to buy into the fun and put on a performance. If players roll into a server and just start bullying people, or aren't really into the idea of placing seeds of doubt, it just doesn't work. Unfortunately, I've already experienced quite a bit of that in the community. Unnecessary griefing, toxic behaviour, all the same issues that you see in Among Us and Project Winter. To that end, I would definitely make sure you have a group of friends to play with, friends who are into the premise and willing to buy into the requirements. Having said that, First Class Trouble also requires 6 players to get off the ground. Not up to 6 players, you cannot start a game without 6 participants. Thankfully we managed that with ease thanks to all the good people hanging out in our Discord server, link in the description below. But that hard requirement could hurt you if your circle of friends is smaller or larger than that. Not something that I'd say is a problem, but it is something that you need to consider before making a purchase. There are some player customization options for your clothing and items for your room and they all feel a little bare bones right now. And my concern here is that first class travel has such a great aesthetic. I really hope that they don't go too crazy on the hat system here because a big part of why the game works is that aesthetic. It wouldn't stop me from enjoying the game, but I definitely hate to lose that vibe. But the big problem right now is the friends system. First class travel doesn't use the steam friends list right now. So you're required to manually add people and that bugged out for quite a few of us. We'd add one person, then try to search for another, and then it wouldn't give us the results, and we'd have to reboot the game. And we also had audio devices drop out on three of our players during a round, and a game restart was needed to rectify that issue. Now, the problems were infrequent, and the developers have already stated that Steam friend list integration is coming, but as of the first early access release right now, like, you just need to know that this is waiting for you. But overall, I really loved First Class Trouble. It strikes a good balance of more mechanics and requirements than Among Us, but less of the role minutiae that Project Winner brings to the table. And it has a great balance of detective work and silly champagne bottle throwing for the lols that just create a beautiful mix of chaos and brilliance that kept us laughing for hours on end. First Class Trouble is an extremely solid foundation, and if they can keep adding new items, decks, and refining that balance, I think we'll have something really special on our hands. If you have the friends or a community willing to buy it, then First Class Trouble is worth it. Thanks for watching everyone, make sure you hit that like button and smash the subscribe, and if you could, head on over to our Patreon. Every single month on pixelsofbreakfast.net, we release videos, podcasts, and in-depth articles from creators all across the industry, and we'd really like to start paying those contributors. With your help, we can make that a reality and stay independent. You'll also get special access to all the review notes from every video that I make, the podcast one day early, plus a Discord role and a few other extra goodies and your name in the credits, plus the satisfaction of knowing that you are helping your creators stay alive. And as always, don't forget to pixelate your breakfast. <laughs>